there's a decision. My neighbors are trying to live and function and they're not part of this. And this is rude and disrespectful and invasive. And I know it's your job and I'm not upset with you, but I mean enough. It's been three years. Can you guys please go away and leave me alone? You're, you're literally posted in front of my neighbor's houses. You're literally like <laughs> filming my kid. My dog's been freaking out. I've ignored you for several hours. We're in the middle of traffic. Like this is insane. Didn't a seven year old just get decapitated? This is like borderline stalking. I don't want to talk to you guys. You know, we haven't shot your son. We I really appreciate to be as that. As possible. We're also trying to give you an opportunity to respond. I don't want There's an a opportunity. Lot of information in the news today about you, and it's our There's... job to be here to see if there's anything you want. To that's say. why I'm not angry with you because I know you're doing your job, um, but I don't want to respond. There's nothing that I can say or do that changes anyone's impression about me. People think what they think and they feel what they feel, and it is what it is. Um, there are people that are also in favor. There are of tons you. of people that are in favor. You. Um, and, and, and of you course, to them. thank you. Thank you, a billion thank yous. I appreciate your support. I appreciate the love and um, an outpouring of support that I've received. You know, it's very interesting. Um, there, there's a tale of two Rochesters, and I have a demographic, and only people that live in the city of Rochester can vote for me. So I would love for you guys to go talk to some of them. But I don't want you guys to disturb my neighbors. And I don't want you to film my slowly decaying house. And I don't want you to record my son. Oh, and I want my dog to shut up because he has the most annoying yip. Like, you don't even know. Well, you probably do know because you probably have heard him. And so I tried to just ignore you, but you're not going away. So you understand, you're not a normal citizen. You're an elected leader in our community. And that's why we feel like we have an obligation to, to reach you. Oh, multiple times. I lived in East Rochester. How many times have you been to talk to the judge there oh, at his home? Oh. My colleagues have been there You've a couple times. A couple times. And did you have a conversation I with him? I personally did not. Because four hundred thousand dollars is a half a million dollars almost, and I don't think I've seen remotely the kind of coverage on that that I have on this. And there were no criminal charges, and you guys are silent. So that's fine. Like, do your job the way you want to do it. We're not silent. I mean, he took his punishment, and he kind of went away, and it was that was 2015 that. 2015 to 2018, he took his punishment, not being legally charged with a crime and deciding to give up his law license that he would have lost as a result of a felony anyway when he decided to? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what kind of punishment you're talking about. I did three months in jail on a misdemeanor. He took his punishment? He, three he, years he after took, the fact. He took the, the, the punishment three handed years. down from the commission. No, 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 he decided what his punishment was. Three years after the fact, when he wasn't charged with a crime, he decided he was done being a judge, and he decided he was being, done being a lawyer, and he paid no one one dime of money back, and you guys... Let it roll off your back. No worries. Like, it's fine. You report what you want to. But I'm, I'm done. Like, what else is there to say? Do you want to continue to be a judge? Will you fight this? I don't know. We'll see. I haven't stopped being a judge. That hasn't changed. Whether or not I'm able to go into the courthouse, depending on what somebody thinks today or tomorrow, that hasn't changed. I've always wanted to do my job. That's why I ran for it. The citizens of the city of Rochester voted me in. Um, it is... It is a very odd thing to see when the voters' will is subverted by a group of individuals who decide they know what the voters want better than they do. Do you? You're a black woman. I'm asking you, baby girl. Do you? Because there's not one judge that's ever been removed from the bench for DWI, including judges that pissed on cop cars, including judges that tried to take police officers' guns, including judges that have been arrested repeatedly while in their cars drunk and asleep including judges, the last judge we had in Monroe County got a DWAI and got a DWI while his case was pending and continued to stay on the bench and hear cases. Do you? But the commission said that those judges either admitted that they had a problem and seeked help or that they voluntarily gave up their judgeships. It wasn't for them. They were pretty clear that it wasn't just the DWI. Had it been just that DUI, you would probably still be on the bench. No, it was everything that followed. I, know. I went to Thailand after the media attacked me and I got charged for holding a cup. That cup was ultimately dismissed and then I left the country to try to get away from the constant pressure and it was totally legal for me to leave the country. I had absolutely nothing pending in court. I was not allowed to go to work. It was completely legal for me to leave the country when I did. And somehow that resulted in this continuing. Do you think that I, I legit had two, three months left before this conditional discharge was up? Do you think that I would have thought, geez, if I leave the country, which I'm legally allowed to do, this will continue on for the next two years of my life, I would have left? No, I would have sat here and ignored you guys like I've been doing for the last two years. So, I mean, read whatever you want to in the decision. 
come to whatever conclusions you want to. I really just came out because I want you guys to go away. I don't want to talk to you, but you're a black woman. You asked me a question that I think you can figure out the answer to on your own. Astasio, people want to know, why do you keep doing these things to get yourself in trouble? Doing what things? Existing? Um, last time I was in the news, I don't know what channel you're with, but I was literally a headline because all the judges in New York State got a raise. What did I do to inspire that? What did I do for Spectrum to post a photo of me and to have one of their viewers post my address online after you guys have repeatedly filmed my house and my street and encourage people to come to my house and get their $190,000 worth out of me? What did I do That's to prompt that? Us. We didn't do that. We didn't post your address. Yeah, Spectrum, Spectrum. Address. You guys all posted my address, I actually. Never, you, I can you, guarantee you that we have never baby posted girl, your address. You're lying. I and you're not. not doing it on purpose, but you're lying. When this happened, you all posted my address. It was part of the original complaint. You posted my address, my home phone number, and my driver's license number. Once my attorney sent a cease and desist, you took it down and redacted it. But every one of your channels posted my home address. I still get letters. I'm going to kill you. I still get letters from prison because you all posted my address. Every single one of you posted my home address. So perhaps you didn't mean to, perhaps you didn't think about it, perhaps in retrospect it was a bad idea. But yeah, it was part of the complaint and you all posted my home address, my driver's license number, my personal cell phone number. Yes, you did. You did. Go back and look at your records. You all did. Where we, I'm with Channel 8. We never did anything. You that. all did. You all did. At arraignment, you all did. It was part of the original paperwork. It was part of the packet that you received. You did redact it afterwards, but every single one of you did. Well, our, I want you to understand. You personally that might not, not have. But it's not <laughs> our intention. We see your son out here. We see where you live. We don't want people to come to you. But to they do. You. But they but do. As a public official, I deserve to be attacked. To, no, no. You I have, deserve to be assaulted deserve. when I go to Radio Social by random psychotic people that are chasing me because I'm Judge Astacio. No, no. Because that's what's happening. That. That's I, what's happening. This media firestorm is fueling people thinking that I'm not a human thinking that I'm not a person, thinking that I don't have children, that I don't have feelings. They get behind a keyboard and they say ridiculous, crazy, heinous things and they encourage people to accost me and to assault me and to see me in public and to think that it's their right to speak to me or to say crazy things to me or to do crazy things to me. That is what has been created here. And you're blaming us for that? I'm blaming a multitude of things, but yeah, the, the villainization by the media hasn't helped at all. I and I argue that we are reporting the facts. We're letting you comment that's why we're here we're here every time there's something because we're gonna report it and we want you to have an ample opportunity no you're gonna go back to the office and you're gonna cut and paste and you're gonna chop it up and at the end of this i'm probably gonna have flipped somebody off and said i hate everyone and i'm a racist like that's what happens every time and it's okay it's fine like i've accepted what it is but <laughs> but you guys have a perspective that you come from and you have a following that you encourage and whatever, that's your job, you know, it's fine. It's a little sad for me. My daughter used to want to be in media and this has completely destroyed that. She has said on, on, cause she, at first she was mad and I said, don't be mad, this is their job. And she said, what a horrible job. And, and when your cameras are off and you're, I like, I like you guys plenty. Like I don't have an issue with you. I understand that this is your job, but what a sucky job to try to document and and record like the lowest points in a person's life. That must really, really suck. That's why I try not to be rude to you guys. That's why I try to smile when I see you. That's why I try, because this is your job. And I haven't always Is liked my jobs. Mm, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not dead, so it's not really fair to make that assumption, is it? I'm kind of hoping that we're not hitting any more lows, but you know, I never know. I got up today to go to the dentist and found out from the media that this decision was coming out. No, no, I find out most of the things that happened to me from you guys. They didn't contact you? They said they, they said contacted they, Yeah, they said they did this morning. Did you receive a call from them or no? No, I didn't receive a call from anyone, and everyone has my phone number. I came out this morning and received a gigantic box, and I was like, guys, please stop coming to my house unannounced. I was going to the dentist. While at the dentist, Adam Chodak texted me and said, I heard there's a decision coming at 11. And I said, oh, maybe I should look inside this box. I typically find out what's happening in my life from you guys. I think that I've fought as much as I have because of my supporters and I don't ever want them to think that they should give up or they should be bullied or they should allow, you know, people's opinion to sway how they react. Um, but I'm tired. I'm tired. You know, everybody can talk about how much money I make as a judge. Uh, sorry. I had to. <laughs> he is a runner and he will like go in the house and never come out again, please. Um, and so he will terrorize the neighborhood. He attacked a pit bull the other day like it's a real problem. So I had to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, you know, yeah, I make, I make really good money as a judge. Sorry guys, I made really good money before I was a judge. 
I was in private practice. I was a private attorney. I got paid in cash a lot. Like I, I made money before this. I have a law license. I didn't get this job so I could make money. I already had money. And as you can see, like I didn't move on up. I didn't move to Park Ave. I lived here before I got this job. That busted broken Hyundai that's in my driveway had that before I got this job. You see how fancy I am when I'm not at work? Like it hasn't changed me at all. And I think that's part of the problem. I'm the same person that I was when I was a teen mom. I'm the same person I was when I was struggling at MCC. I'm the same person I was when I was in the DA's office. I'm the same person I was in private practice. This is an amazing job, but it's not because of my income. It's not because of my income. This is an amazing job because I get to interact with people in the city of Rochester that look like me, that lived like me, that are going through what I went through to get where I am. And I get to show them that they can do something else. So to see you guys in this light is devastating because this is the opposite of everything I represent and everything I've spent my entire life to work for. So when I don't give up, yeah, it's not because of me because I could have a long time ago said, forget this, gone back into private practice. And I don't think you would have heard anything about me again. It's because I didn't that this continues to be a story. It's because I fight that this continues to be a story. But it's also because there's charges that are con a That continue to get dismissed. How many charges were there that got dismissed? How many times, um, the last time that I went into custody, literally, we had a conversation about how I didn't have to pay for a scram bracelet. I went into custody because I didn't have to pay for a bracelet. I didn't pay for it, and I went to jail for not doing something that I couldn't legally be ordered to do. And on appeal, what did the judge say? She never had to pay for that. When I got out of jail and they said, oh, she, I never had to go to probation. Yeah, it was big news. I knew, I'm a judge. You think I didn't know I didn't have to go to probation? I didn't have to go to probation. I never got terms and conditions. I went because I wanted you guys to go away and leave me alone. I didn't want to be a story anymore. I didn't have to go to probation. I didn't have to pay for a scram bracelet. I knew I didn't have to pay for that. I paid for it because I didn't want to be a story anymore. So yeah, yeah, violations every day. Yes, I held a cup. I'm probably violating some law, right? I'm jaywalking. So tonight at 11, you guys go crazy. We're all, this is discon. We're all about to go to jail. Except you're all good. You're all perfectly fine. I'm the only one that's going to have a VOP filed tomorrow for disorderly conduct for standing in the middle of the street. So yeah, violation after violation. It's news because you want it to be. We don't want Hold, it to be. These are Maybe holding a cup is not a crime. But, but I'm not accusing you of a crime. The court is. No, Berkeley Breen posted a photo and the court responded. This entire case has been media driven. I've never, ever seen a case with, that is more clear cut driven by the media. The How media says this. this all play out for you? I mean, it should be the law. Thank you. It should be the law. It should. I can't imagine an instance in which an individual is arrested or charged with violating for literally holding a cup. I don't know if there's liquid in the cup. I don't know what the liquid is, but you're holding a cup and that's a violation of a conditional discharge. This is insanity. I sit in my house and I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. You could go to Thailand legally. You had no court appearances pending. You had done everything you were ordered by the court to do, but you shouldn't have gone. So we're gonna tell you on Friday that you have court on Tuesday, knowing Monday is a holiday and you're in Asia. And if you fail to appear with literally no business day's notice, you violated the terms and conditions of your conditional discharge and you go to jail? So seeing how the court system has worked out, these questions that That's why I'm a judge, baby girl. That's exactly why I'm here, because the court system works out differently for different people, and that's a problem. That's and, a problem. And you're proving that. I didn't mean to. <laughs> that was not my goal. I just wanted to be on the bench and to change it. You know, I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. That was the point, to be the change. But I just told you about another case where you said he took his punishment. Oh, I beg to differ. To be on the other side of that. You know, it's not new to me. I'm from the streets. I'm from, you know, my family is, I'm from, I live here for a reason. So it's not new to me. The terrifying thing to me is if it can happen to me, right? An elected official with a, with a law degree on television, which is making international news. Like this is, in, this is not national news, this is international news. If it can happen to me with all of you watching, I'm terrified of what happens to everyone else. I am scared, I am worried. I am not in this position for me. I have a law license, I've been practicing more than five years. I can move to somewhere else where nobody knows that I exist. I can go to an island, I'm a fan of Thailand. I like Mexico, I don't even have to be in the United States. I can speak enough Spanish to get by. Like. This is not about me. This has actually never been about me. This has never been about me. Uh, the, the best 
example I have is I remember talking to, and I don't remember, uh, Claret, I think, it's gorgeous, gorgeous newscaster, um, who was downtown, who was just filming the Black Lives Matter protest on East Avenue, and her and her counterpart got arrested. And I sent her a message, and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that this happens to you. And I know you already know. I know you already know. You're doing your job. I know you already know, and it must be difficult. But I'm sorry that this is happening to you. I just want to reach out and say that. We can pretend that we don't see what's going on here. We all can if you'd like. But nobody's dumb and nobody's blind. This is, this is I'm, I'm not the first judge to ever be charged with DWI. I'm sure I won't be the last. I would like to know what reason there is to deviate from what has always been the standard operating procedure. But he, he pretty clearly outlined it. He said today you wouldn't have likely lost your position had it been just that DUI. It was everything that came after that. So when you talk to me about the judge who literally got arrested for DWI twice, what's what's your answer then? I don't know. I don't know when you talk to me about, about the judge that, that, well, I'm referencing plenty. When you talk about the judge that led the police on a two-mile chase after flipping a car, when you talk about the judge that literally opened the trunk after the police told him not to and said, I want to show you that I'm a judge. When you talk about the judge that urinated on a police car. When you talk about the judge that tried to take the police officer's gun. When you talk about the judge that literally called the district attorney's office from the police barracks and said, oh, what are you going to do? I'm getting arrested for DWI. When you talk about using your influence and using your role, you can say whatever you want. He can say whatever he wants. I'm saying that I'm not blind. If you would like to pretend that the issue is something other than what it is, that's totally fine. He also said, though, that he didn't like your conduct on the bench in 2015. Do, do you know what he's referencing? A couple cases that he said he thought what you said was inappropriate for the defendant. That's totally his, he's entitled to his opinion. A lot of people don't like my conduct. I, sh I rub a lot of people wrong in the beginning, and then I grow on them. They like me in the long run. I have a smart mouth, but I have a good heart. And that has been, I think, obvious the entire time that you guys have been doing this. You get what you give. So if you give me an attitude, you get an attitude. If you give me respect, you get respect. That's why just now we said I didn't. I'm like, you know what? You're right. You didn't. I don't have an issue with you. This is your job. But when you're rude to me, when you're combative to me, when you're argumentative to me, that's what you get in return. And I think that I've tried to work on that because I think if I would have been a little less attitude -y, we probably wouldn't even be here now. If I would have known my place when this whole incident occurred. Yeah, they're annoying. They're super annoying. <laughs> they do this. Oh, oh, my God. They do it all night, too. Um, but then we might not be in this situation, but we are. And, you know, this is how you guys get me, right? Because I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. And 17 hours later, let me tell you. And like, <laughs> I am not a be quiet person probably haven't noticed I am not a rollover person I am not a person who just takes what is dished out to me so this has been really hard because that is always the advice like just be quiet just be quiet just stay under the radar and that's not really my MO um, and so um, it, it's been very difficult to do that what just, happens to him for you? Uh, you know <laughs> there's there's a meme that I saw the other day and I will just paraphrase them it says I'm only gonna get doper <laughs> And I can't put it any better, right? Like, I ran because I wanted to be a judge. And no matter what, I was. I am. Like, you can't undo that ever. I have a law degree. I've overcome so much in my life that irrespective of how this plays out, I'm going to end up on top. Like, and that's not me being arrogant and that's not me being cocky. That's me saying that I'm a fighter. And, you know, me smiling, me, that's not me being arrogant. That's me saying you guys are not going to break me, irrespective. You think six figures? I've been broke. You know what I mean? I've been poor. I've had nothing. So I'm good either way. There's, there's a scripture, actually, that says that I'm good with, with everything or with nothing. And I believe, speaking, I'll just start speaking these into existence, all things work for the good of those that love the Lord. So I don't know what the end game here is. But if I'm not going to be a judge, then I can just tell you I'm going to be something better. I don't know where this is going. This wasn't the path that I would have ever chosen. That is the coolest phone case I've ever seen. Like that? I love it. Like, the, do, do you have a Zelda in your pocket? Because I, I <laughs> um, you know, I, and so I just, I try to, you know, to, to stay rooted in that. They say that the Lord will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. So, oh my God, he has like a serious buffet going on because I have, a, I have an enemy conga line in Rochester right now. But I am trusting him that whatever he has for me, 
you know, and you guys weren't there when I got elected, but from the outset, I said I had no intentions of ever being a judge. I just wanted to be in private practice, and I started feeling like I was, like God was calling me to run. Not like I'm, you know, crazy and I'm not super religious, but I kept having this feeling that I was supposed to run. And there was no seat available. Literally no seat. And I was walking back from Caroline Morrison's swearing in ceremony, arguing in my mind, because I argue with God too, arguing in my mind, like, God, leave me alone. There's not even a seat for me to run for. And a person who works for the city now sent me a Facebook message and said, the legislature just signed your seat into existence. Are you ready for this, Your Honor? And I was like, oh, okay, God, I'll shut up and I'll run for office. You know, and then I got no support. Like, I was nobody's candidate. I have no political affiliations. I got no support and I won. So I believe in, you know, signs and what's supposed to happen happened. And I don't think that all of this happened for this to be the end. Did you watch the Judicial Commission's press conference? I don't watch the news at all. <laughs> I don't even have cable. I'm like, you guys want to keep playing with me? I will turn off. <laughs> no, I don't even have cable. I actually, I told you I was at the dentist. Oh, maybe I didn't. I was going to the dentist. Yeah, no, I didn't. I got an, a text. Adam was nice enough to let me know that it was happening. I appreciated that. Um, no, I didn't watch their decision. I, I heard through the grapevine, obviously, what their decision was. You know. So you don't you don't know the facts or anything that they referenced and why they made the decision they made. Um, I have my own opinions, irrespective of whatever they referenced as to why they made the decision that they made. I think that. I was in the district attorney's office for a while, and unfortunately, sometimes the more media attention a case gets, the more punishment a case receives, um, because there's an outrage. You know, the public is like, Ugh! and so you want to quell that public perception that people are not being adequately punished. So I think this case being international news, irrespective of whether I tried to be quiet or sit down, or it has gotten a lot of attention. And so typically, when things like this happen, they are quiet. If they're even charged, they're very quiet. And my case has not been quiet. Um, so I don't know that that seeing a press conference would have changed my opinion because um, I've had an opinion about how this has been being handled the entire time. So now this is like a whole full-fledged interview. You guys got way more than a sound bite. Can you please go away? Thanks for not talking to us. Uh, no problem. You know I'm really good at not talking to you guys. I'm like, I'm just going to. So then my son keeps coming outside and I'm like, and he's like, he's like I'm going to scare him the way they're scaring me. And I'm saying if I was, you said no, if you were drinking your house. And I'm saying.